What's going on, everybody? It's Frank Jr. Welcome back to Talking Title with Beth and Frank. Today, we're going to go over some uh, marketing, do a little marketing podcast, how to help you get some uh, get some leads going, get the real estate moving. Uh, right, we have a special guest today. She is the owner of Gatehouse Marketing. She worked for Tropical Realty, expanding the company from, oh, from 30 agents to over 100 agents. She was in charge of operations at Carpenter Kessel. Uh, then moved into a marketing role, helping grow sales from 80 million to over 150 million. We got Amy Savios. Hello, thank you for having me, Frankie. And uh, so today we're just going to talk. We're going to go right into it. A bunch of types of marketing. Yes. Um, I do marketing for Bella Title, so Mom's not here today. Uh, going to go dive deep into all types of marketing, what we think you can do for your business, and then uh, what to do with these leads when we get them. Yes, very important. That's uh, Amy's specialty. It's going to be that uh, that lead. Once we get the lead generation, what to do the with these. The lead nurture and follow up. Perfect. All yeah. right. So we're going to start up right into traditional marketing, which I think, you know, is kind of the basics. Everybody wants to do these. So the first one we're going to talk about is direct mail. Direct mail. Gotcha. So kind of our main thing we're going to talk about today, um, Amy and I were discussing, is going to be diving into not just doing one, right? Like we figured that like when we talked, that was like our most important thing. So yeah, so anything direct mail, you have to be consistent. So a one-off postcard or flyer is gonna have no impact and you're going to have, uh, you know, a lower return on investment than if you had a consistent uh, piece going out or a campaign, something like that. So I always say, if you're gonna do direct mail, it has to be more than once. It has to be six months at least before you can really measure your results. And that's kind of going to be our narrative for all the marketing is going to be just don't, you know, one Facebook post, one Instagram post, one direct mail, one email. None of this is going to work. Right. Um, you got to stay consistent. Yes. And that's kind of going to be our, our big thing we chirp on today is consistency. Like she said, sending one email or one direct mail that says, hey, I sold the house isn't really going to bring you much business. Exactly. Um, so what's the goal of direct mail? What are we trying to get? So, there. well, it depends. Um, number one, direct mail, a lot of times you're gonna see, like you were just saying, just sold, just listed. So those are great to let the neighborhood that you're farming know about the activity that you have helped procure in their neighborhood. But every single piece of direct mail, besides the content and whatever story you're trying to tell or let them know about, it needs to have a call to action. So that's where it kind of depends what, what's your goal. Are you looking for buyers? Are you looking for sellers? Uh, are you looking for both? So. For instance, I would say if I was looking for sellers, I would almost always want my call to action to be something that would allow them to reach out and get an estimated home value from me because I want them to contact me so I can give them a home valuation and potentially talk to them about what they could do uh, if they wanted to sell and cash in on that estimate that you know we, we came up with. So um, QR codes are going to be a huge thing now that we've kind of all been through the, the COVID menu yeah, right. situation. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm kind of pumped about how that worked out because QR codes were this really odd thing that no one knew how to use. No one knew what to do with. I mean, they've been around for years and everybody was just kind of scared of them. You used to have to download a specific app yeah, to be to able to read the them. Code, yeah. yeah. And now your Google camera or your camera inherent in your phone will, will read it. So um, you definitely want a call to action. So like you said, if we're saying that we just listed or just sold something, I'm gonna want that call to action to say, um, you know, click on this website or scan this to g find out your home value or something. I, I want them to contact me. I want them to have a reason to contact me. You, you always need a call to action. Yes, and then uh, something we did talk about too, um, was again, the multiple. So say we wanna, what's the next? So we, we sold the house, we get that out there. What would be the next direct mail that we got out there? Okay, so... Our first one is, hey, we just sold this house. Would you like to know your home value? What do you think the next thing should be? Um, so I would suggest uh, if you don't have any other listings in that area, but say you have buyers uh, that are looking for a home in that in that development subdivision, what have you, and you can't seem to come across one, that piece of mail could be, hey, I just sold this house and I've got three, four, five buyers lined up looking for the same exact thing. Does your yes. house fit the bill? I think those... Um, you know, what is it called? It's like when you go on uh, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, it's an ISO in search mm -hmm. of. Yeah. I feel like an in search of piece really speaks to the homeowner because if they recognize and relate like that's the, oh, I have that. I have a four bedroom with a with a pool on a uh, with a fence. Yeah. Let, let me call you, you know, because I'm telling that potential seller, I've already got somebody who wants your house. So. If I'm a seller and I'm looking to hire a realtor, I'm probably gonna wanna talk to the person that already has the buyer lined up. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So I would definitely, if you have additional people, I would put that out to that farm that, hey, I just sold this and I'm looking for more. Who's got something? Uh, I would also continue uh, further on down the line to promote any additional listings that you get in that area, any additional sales you get in that area. And then depending, there's a lot of things you could do with your farm area. If you live there, there's a lot more you could do because you, you know, you, you're around, you walk your dog or you bump into your neighbors, that sort of thing. Um, so I love the idea of putting something out in direct mail, organizing an event, organizing a garage sale, or, you know, it could be a, a contest for the neighbors. Hey, I'm going to be driving around on, you know, 4th of July and the most patriotic house is going to win a prize. Now, I'm not necessarily making anybody reach out to me with that, but I'm hoping people are going to participate and I'm going to be out and about with my flags going, I'm checking out the neighborhood just like that postcard, you know? So Yeah, working on branding, which we will go into later yes, on. Yes, yep. exactly. The one thing I like about direct mail, too, is you can use it for um, getting new business, but I think you can do a personal side for clients you already have. Absolutely. So and running that's a, a completely different campaign than what we yeah. were just talking about. Yeah. And then, you know, you can you can have the direct mail as in, you know, farming and trying to get business, but I also think mail's not dead. So if somebody, if you do How write... How excited are you when you get a real piece of mail. Someone writes you a letter. Um, You can send out, some people do um, little gift cards, uh, Christmas cards, but again, handwritten notes, just, hey, I'm thinking about you, um, is a good thing to send your past clients to get, you know, more of those referrals. I think the funny thing that we are starting to notice with how much technology has taken over our world is the most analog things are now the biggest indication that somebody has put time and effort into something Mm -hmm. because we know how quick it is to send an email a text and we know nobody answers their phones right so the fact that somebody took the 10 to 15 minutes to hand write something yeah i'm I'm definitely going to pay attention to that that's one of my favorite things to get as a because when you sit there and again you do see a lot let's all send frankie letters yes i'll take all also also (laughs) brie brie checks the mail so i don't know where my mailbox is at the new house yet um (laughs) but i will i will find it i've been there for two months i'll find the mail all right so that's direct mail our next thing we're going to go into is call um i would someone call it telemarketing um, but just making phone calls. So this is my least yeah, favorite thing. Yeah, we talked thing. about that. We did. I do not like making phone calls. You um, show up. Yes, I'm an in-your-face kind of person. But here's the other thing that we've talked about with marketing is you just got to do it. So what you're really well at, do a lot. What you suck at, do a lot. Yes. Um, just because you're bad at it, people don't know you're bad at it. So nobody thinks, like you might think you're bad at making phone calls, but at the end of the day, you're gonna make a phone call and they're gonna be like, wow, I really enjoyed talking to Frankie there. Exactly. Um, so that's the other thing. If you don't think you're good at something, just do it, because nobody knows you're not good at it. So, and the thing that we were talking about with the phone calls is, you know, we were talking about like cold calls, mm-hmm. really hating cold calls. Yeah, those and, are the worst. And that's something that maybe is a little bit more common for an agent to deal with than maybe somebody in your role, because mm-hmm. you know most of your, your customers and, and you've met them in some form they may just not have been a customer of Bella yet but you've seen them around because you know who the realtors are but we don't necessarily as a real estate agent know who all of the potential buyers and sellers are so I say with the cold calling you if you are if it's totally cold calling you don't know this person from anything you've got to have a reason to call them because how many times have you gotten a call and you're like yeah yeah uh uh-huh that's me Uh uh-huh what is this Who, who are you what do you want so, so get right to it. It's kind of like those YouTube videos where it's like, hey, everybody, hi, it's me. I just want to know, what's the video about? Tell me right now. So if I am calling somebody who I've never spoken to before, I'm going to have a reason to call them. So it may be, in my opinion is the cold calling for real estate agents should be focused about delivering some sort of value, some piece of information that doesn't necessarily require anything back from them so that they're willing to just have the conversation, thank you so much, and that's it. So something like, hey, my name is Amy, Uh, I'm an agent, I have a listing down the block from you and we're having an open house, I just wanted to call and personally invite you as the neighbor to come and see the home. You know, a lot of times neighbors determine who who moves into into the neighborhood, so choose your neighbor, who do you know who's looking for this house, come by, let's have a chat. I like that. You know, I'm not selling you anything, I'm just saying, hey, come by and do the thing we know you want to do, which is be the nosy neighbor, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I like to say that if you're going to be cold calling, you've got to have a reason. It's either because you want to let them know about a listing that's going on in their neighborhood, a sale that just happened in their neighborhood. It could be uh, that you're having an open house in the neighborhood, 
or there's something else like I have a buyer who's looking for a house just like yours. Is there any chance that you've been considering selling? Can we chat? I think when somebody reaches out and they don't feel like they're being sold to, they're going to engage in that conversation. And that makes those cold calls a lot easier because no one wants to cold call and go, hi, do you want to buy or sell a house? No, it's, hey, how's it going? I'm just in the neighborhood. I just wanted to give you a heads up about something. No pressure. Thank you. That's all I needed. And the funny thing is about cold calling, it's the easiest one to do. It doesn't cost you anything. You you already have a phone, and you can sit in your bed in your pajamas and make phone calls all day. It doesn't take a lot of effort to make these. Don't give away my secrets. But it's the one that we all don't like to do, you know? But it really, it's the easiest. It's the easiest type of marketing. You already have this lead, or you already have this contact. You pick up the phone, you make a call. Um... So again, and it's like you my said, least. the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the better yes. you get at it and the less fear of rejection. Because I think that's a lot of times is I don't want to be hung up on because, you know, you hang up on those you all know, the time, all the time. <laughs> is somebody trying to call you about your extended warranty? You yeah. know, thankfully, those are recordings. So you don't feel bad hanging up. But, you know, so people get over that feel of fear of rejection after practice. And I think that's another thing we have to get over in marketing. Um, you can't really be scared of what somebody's going to think. No. It's get it out there. Like I said earlier, just because you think you're bad at it, nobody thinks you're bad at it. I guarantee you are thinking more about yourself than anybody else. 100%. And that's going to be in every type of marketing we do. Absolutely. Don't be scared to make a Facebook post, to make a phone call, to send, uh, e- to put your picture on stuff. You look great. Everybody thinks you look great. You're the only one. You're your harshest critic. Exactly. And that's going to be in all of the type of marketing. Getting over that fear, as I say, is most people's problem yes. is that they're more scared to post something than they are like lack of ideas everybody has ideas they're just scared of what people are going to think of their ideas that's a very good point so that's the biggest thing is get over that fear because once that some of the stuff i post or say i think is the dumbest stuff ever and i'm like nobody's gonna like this and then i'll get 300 people to like it so it's the stuff that you think is the worst that actually does the best it's silly how it works well i will say something is you're authentic and that's why it works because you don't come off like you are trying to say or do something that isn't Frankie and I think people are very caught up in I have to appear a certain way I have to behave or present a certain persona in order to do business okay I get that but that shouldn't come at the sacrifice of your own personality and your own communication style so the more you lean into who you are authentically in your marketing, the more likely you're going to attract the right kind of lead that appreciates somebody with that sense of humor or that uh, maybe that sense of uh, straightforwardness. You know, somebody might come across very, I'm just about the facts, I'm about the data. There's going to be a lot of people that that will resonate with. There will be a lot of people that that won't. But if you are authentic to who you are, you will attract the people who appreciate you for who you are. And then you don't have to f- worry about pretending or putting on uh, uh, airs because you're worried about what somebody thinks. You already know that they're here because they like you. Yeah. You know? Which makes marketing a lot easier. Which yeah. makes working a lot easier when you're working with people that are Absolutely. Like-minded. All right. So our next type of marketing is going to be brand marketing. And this is for the long term. Yes. So anything you do for this, any kind of dollar spent, don't look for a quick Correct. Yeah, it's going to be something that, you know, in two to three or four years really helps you grow your business. Um, some of the stuff are examples of sponsoring some events. So you want to sponsor the schools, charity events, mm-hmm. kids sports. Um, you know, if you have a kid and they play softball, we talked about this. We did, yeah. Um, put put your face on the thing. Sponsor the team. Sponsor the team. But one of the biggest things we talked about is yeah. showing up. Show up. Um, don't just throw your face out there and never go. I see it all the time where... You see somebody who will sponsor something, but you don't ever see them at the event, or you don't ever yes. see them anywhere. Um, I think people they, notice that. Yeah, people I, no, obviously we're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it goes hand in hand. If you're going to throw your face on something, be there. Um, money's cool; they like money, but they also like help. So if you can, You'd be surprised at how much farther you can go with help than money. And you talked about like your kids' sports team. So if you're going to, you know, sponsor your daughter's little league, um, go bring lunch after go bring snacks go bring drinks um and you know be and and don't go over the top with the branding on the water bottles and handing out business cards you know uh what is it (laughs) stapled to the little bag of (laughs) goldfish don't do that but like you said you've got that banner out in the in the outfield that says you know ask me about real estate whatever it's got your face and you're sitting there in the in the bleachers you're cheering on your son that person looking 
looking at you, looking at the banner, looking at you. Oh, that's that's you. And then you go, yeah, that's me over there. And they go, how's the market? Because let me tell you, every realtor knows this. If you're wearing your name tag or you have something that says you're a realtor, you will get asked by a stranger, how's the market? market yep. My, I used to work for, um, when I first started, uh, on the the agent side here, I was an assistant for Linda Farahi. She has since passed. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman. Love her dear, dearly. And she always taught me, she goes, I am never without my name tag. Because every time she went into Publix or a store, somebody would ask her. And you know how many times she would turn those conversations into clients because they would talk about the market. She wasn't marketing herself, but she was branding herself by always having her name tag. And it, it just kind of stuck with me about how effective that was for her for starting conversations without her having to be the one to start it, which yeah. makes it way more comfortable, like you said. Yeah, which is funny because I have a, I was talking to one of my clients and um, she made a point that she always tries to find a line. And she says, you know me, I love a line. To stand in. And oh. she stands in so she could talk to people, which I thought was, and then she's like, well, I found out I was buying $5 chicken at Fresh Market. Um, and now she goes every week and she stands with these ladies and gets $5 chicken. And she's met them and she's got business from it. Which, Incredible. Which is branding, just showing up, which exactly. is, again, the I consistency point of mm-hmm. it. It's a, If you're just going to throw your face on the back of a, on a sign, you know, show up, be consistent, be there. So that sign actually works. It pays off for you. Nike didn't get where they are by putting one billboard up. Yeah. So uh, that's branding. Again, we're long term there. You're not expecting a quick return on your money, but it is something that's going to grow your business. Yeah. it's brand, Branding is, is getting your name, your company, and what you do, like your little quick elevator pitch of... I am so-and-so and I help X do X because X, getting that message out there so that anytime anybody's going, oh, I need somebody that does X, you are top of mind because they've seen you over and over again and they keep bumping into you or seeing your advertisements and you just infiltrate their brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I like branding. I Insert think branding's a laugh. big part of a wow. lot of what I do in marketing. Yes. Um, you know, most of my Facebook posts, stuff like that, is just to grow the brand, you know. People see Frankie and they say, Oh, Bella Title and that's all I'm looking for. So tacos, your taco that, thing. It, yes. That has nothing to do with title. Mm, no. But that has gotten you how much business? Yeah, Title Taco Tuesday has grown into which is funny because it just started off as me and Lee. Um, you know, we were twenty five, we just moved back. I remember Tuesdays <laughs> I think I went to tacos with you guys one night. Yeah. Right before you started, I think we had yep. tacos. So Tuesdays were just a day where we didn't do anything. We went and started getting tacos. I took that and turned it into a, a little blog that I would just write down like, hey, we like this place, we didn't like this place, which then turned into Realtors asking to come, mm-hmm. which turned into the video, which turned into rapid fire questions, and then COVID kind of turned it into what we have now. Um, and you know, I've had great success. I've had people that have never met me want to do Taco Tuesday. Realtors that have said, you know, hey, I've, you know, we've never met, but I'd love to be next, which yeah. is kind of the branding aspect of it. Which I didn't, you know, I'm not, I'm just sitting there doing tacos. You're just doing something you already wanted to do, but you just happen to do it on camera and let other people in. That is some of the most effective branding out there right now is that behind the scenes, authentic, this is just my life, guys. This is what I'm doing. And uh, by the way, who doesn't love tacos? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Which that's we'll, kind of an easy one to start with. We'll I, get more into that as like a content. We'll talk about that when we get to uh, our social media marketing because people's biggest problem is content, but they don't realize yes. how much content their yes, average life has. Yes. All right, so our next type of traditional marketing and our last is going to be cause marketing. And this is where you kind of jump on the back of a certain cause. So at Bella Title, um, we donate a portion of every closing to the Brevard Children in Need. I've had uh, multiple golf tournaments where we raise money for the BCIN. Um, and it's just, a, you know, it, it's... It's a charity that was near and dear to, to yep. your family. And, yep. and so you the guys re- supported it and you show up, like yes. you said. And the realtors, um, they run the charity. So, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of fits... The community has done so much for Bella, so it's a way to help the community. Um, Absolutely. But, and that's just, again, you're, I think I went the other day to Panera, and Panera has that big sign. We've given away like $3 million to this charity, and it's the same idea. And um, I don't know, I don't like to say, you know, use it as marketing in a sense, but yes, I, it's kind of, you know, if you can help out yeah. a cause. And it's kind it, of it's kind of like a it's a nice side effect. Yeah, and I would say it's sh- a branding aspect again. Yeah. You're not just sitting there asking for business. Correct. You're it's, actually there to do the work to support the cause. You know, things there's a lot of and there's a lot of uh, organizations around Brevard County where you can actually get hands on. Whether it's from cleaning up a beach, packing up a, a lunch uh, for 
um, the Children's Hunger Project or, you know, volunteering your time at the Daily Bread or something like that, you know, you can actually physically be there. And then again, those conversations will start naturally. And when somebody sees the person that is supporting the cause actually putting in the work, like you said, it does volumes. And so now the charity is going to, and it's like, I know exactly what you're talking about, because we don't want to say you're just doing this to get marketing, business. But it is a benefit of the charity. Right. And, and because you're helping out that charity, you know what? People who were there with you who run the charity, you might be mentioned in a meeting, you know, oh, so-and-so helped out. Maybe they'll, we should uh, reach out to them and invite them to this event or something like that. You're going to get... It's almost like you're going to get, um, I want to call it dark post, but it's not dark post, like um, underground marketing where you don't even know it's happening, yeah. but people are talking about what you've been doing because you are doing something awesome for a really good cause. Yeah. So that's one, um, again, on the branding side, don't look to get a return quickly. Correct. But Be there for the right reason because be you really want to do it and you enjoy it. Like if you don't like needles... Don't volunteer at a blood bank. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, because you think everybody needs to give blood because there was some big tragedy. Like that's probably not the place for you. Yeah. There's probably you could probably do something else that doesn't make you pass out. Yeah. Get something <laughs> you can donate to something you can get behind. That way, when you can put the effort in, you enjoy it. Exactly. All right. So that's our traditional marketing. The next type of marketing we're going to is some digital marketing. Yeah. Um, that's my fave. So search engine marketing. These mm. are the pay for click ads. This is stuff where you're trying to get leads. Now this is how we. Um, people are clicking on your website. People are clicking on Facebook stuff, They're directing finding you. Finding you in a Google search. Yes. Uh, Zillow. These are just getting, you know, that that phone call almost to make that cold call. Correct. You, when somebody wants to look for you, they should be able to find you. So if your marketing has been working, hopefully they already have that QR code or they already know your URL to your website. They know your name by heart. They know how to find you. But if they don't and they go to Google you, you want to make sure you show up and you want to show up because you have the right SEO, search engine optimization, meaning whatever uh, digital content you have out there, you want it optimized for those keywords that relate to what you think somebody would Google or search for when they want to hire somebody who does what you do. So realtor in Melbourne, Brevard County Realtors, you know, whatever that may be, real estate agent, best real estate agent near me. Now, obviously, um, and you may not know this, but there's some things that we can and cannot say as realtors. You, realtor is a designation, so you can't say, I'm your hometown realtor, I'm your best realtor, I'm your this. No, you can just say, I, Amy, am a realtor. That's all you can do. So use agent when you're talking about that sort of stuff. But by having that content on your website, making sure you use those terms, make sure your cities are listed that you work in, the kind of, if you work with veterans, I want you to make sure that you have something on your website that talks about that so that when somebody Googles you or Googles that topic, you show up because there's a lot of competition in the real estate space from the big names. We all know them. You mentioned one of them. <laughs> so you're never going to beat those big guys, right? I'm not going to beat Amazon or Walmart when I'm selling my little widget, right? So, But my widget is very special, so I want to make sure that I talk about it in a way that somebody who needs this type of widget uses those terms to search. So think about the things that you do and how somebody might Google for that and make sure that you reflect that in the content that you post and publish. And this is something, again, that I wasn't the strongest on. Um, but it's funny how, like, when you actually look at the analytics, so Bella Title has a website. Mm -hmm. And I created this website, went on YouTube, found out how to make a website. Good for you. And went and That's plugged awesome. some stuff in, right? And you don't realize, like, Google will tell you like your analytics. So yes. I thought nobody looks at Bellatata website, right? I get 300 people to go to my website a month and I didn't know anybody was going to it. So it, it shows that that stuff does work. It does, you know, 300 people either went to our website to find our address yes. or to find a phone number or to look up an email. You know, you got to make sure all that's on there too because people do like, people like, ah, nobody goes to my stuff. People do go to your website. It is a big thing, especially. Um, I don't know how many times I've gone to websites for vendors just because I'm trying to find an email address. Because yeah. it's not as easy necessarily on social media to find somebody's contact information as it is on their website, yeah. typically, right? So, and especially if you're a real estate agent, because a lot of people use like Google reviews. Oh, Google reviews are hu like absolutely. You have to have a Google My Business, or I think it's now called. Oh gosh, they've changed it so many times, but you need to have a Google listing for yourself because Google is the number one search engine. So. 
you got to be on Google. Yeah, I went to this <laughs> conference, and this is more for the title side, but they said, I mean, 90% of uh, Fizbo's pick their title company based on Google reviews. Makes total so, sense. So, you know, I don't Absolutely. know what it is for real real estate agents, but like, you know, that's a thing, and I use it all the time. If you go on there and you see a fact that, you know, this place has a one star, you question it. Absolutely. You know, that's a Absolutely. big thing, you, you know, and if it only has all five stars, you also question you it. You also question it. You, that's a really good point because people will be, um, you know, really adamant about, oh, leave me a five-star review and, you know, or five stars, five stars. The, there's actual research that says people believe a four-star review more than they believe a five-star review because it just seems like, oh, I'm just giving you five stars. You know, like the, yeah. if, if I took the time to knock off a star, it's because there's a reason and I'm going to believe that. And they actually find them to be sometimes more favorable than the five-star review because they just don't believe the five-star review. My favorite review is the bad review that starts off, I only I had to leave one star. That's why I left one star. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite review. I don't even care what it says after. I love it. I would give you zero stars, but I couldn't. It's my favorite type of review. Oh my gosh, I know. I yeah. love it when people write that. Um, but reviews are a big thing. And if you get a bad review, follow it up. Comment back. Well, all reviews it. comment back. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, try. You can. there's a big, you can change somebody. So like if I, let's just say I have a bad experience at Chick-fil-A. Or here's a good one, Publix, right? Because yep. I worked there. Um, you go into Publix and you take your food that's not good and they give you a full refund for it. You yeah. could eat half of the food yeah. and say, this wasn't good. And they give you a full refund. I mean, it's, and that makes your experience much better. You know, they do something about the bad. And yes. that's what, you can almost change a person to get you, like, if you go in and you have great service or you go in and you kind of have bad service and then from then on you have phenomenal and they did something to fix your bad service, Absolutely. you almost have a lifer there more than you did that person who just had a great service. So interesting story. I uh, interned at college at Walt Disney World in the Walt Disney World College program. So I was a cast member at Magic Kingdom for about four months and I worked in the merchandise uh, section of Adventureland. So right there in the gift shops. I also dressed as a pirate in Pirates of the Caribbean gift shop. That was me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but they give you an intense training on that sort of thing and how to actually like change the narrative because you guys everybody knows you're at disney you got a bunch of kids you're hot you're sweaty the kids are screaming you are a miserable parent or adult in that moment and you come to that cast member and you're like where the heck is mickey i just i know he, the line is too long for this mickey where else is mickey and i understand as a human like Sir, I know exactly what you're going through, but my training at Disney is we have to turn it around. We have to keep this, you know, going in a positive way. And no matter what I'm being given by that person, no matter how negative, you can never match their energy. And, you you know, behavior breeds behavior. So the second I'm, I'm nasty back or agitated back, I'm going to get that. And the same kind of goes for reviews. I think when you see responses a lot of times you'll see this online you'll see the responses to negative reviews mm -hmm. and sometimes those brands can get a little quippy that, yeah. that's a word right snippy, Wendy's snippy, is snippy, one of them. oh but they do it with they they're it awesome with, yeah. they do it with humor Wendy's and so you it. know there's a joke there yeah but there are some who are just like well you know you can move along to, please don't say that say i really appreciate you taking the time to give this feedback and i understand that there was a this was a difficult trans transaction uh but I'm I'm happy to say that you know we still made it, and I hope you enjoy your 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 new home in Merritt Island. Whatever you know, yeah. whatever it may be, just address it. Don't hide from it. You can't, and that's the other thing. It's very hard to get negative reviews taken down, and yeah. so you're better off just addressing it right there in that review as a response. And you may get reviews from people who have never worked from you, and it's worked with you I've seen that happen where agents will have they're like I don't know who this person is I've never worked with them I don't know their name so you can actually respond and say hey I appreciate you leaving a review but it looks like we've never worked together could you uh, reach out so we could discuss this further would you like to buy or sell a home <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love that and that's one <laughs> that's one, one like we talked about the Wendy's I remember when IHOP came out with burgers and they were like watch out Wendy's and they're like we're not scared of somebody who thought pancakes were too hard you know <laughs> and it's just like the clever oh, you know good. the wittiness yes. um which again if that's what you that's your thing going people like that you got me I'm saying it now and that was like three years ago there you go and that's and that's the thing about being authentic like if if Wendy's they decided their brand was going to have a little bit of a, a, a spice to their their you know their humor and they're going to be a little uh they're going to razz people and they're going to have fun with it you could do that yeah but 
don't second guess yourself. If that's who you're going to be, that's who you're going to be. There's plenty of people who have a little bit of an edgier personality and then they completely hide it in their business life. And I get that in certain industries, but real estate's really different because, I mean, you ask any of these realtors, they know you become the therapist, the marriage counselor, the the, the parenting consultant, the finance, everything. And you, you, be, you, you become friends or better than acquaintances. You know, you may not like vibe and become best friends, but I don't know how many times I've met agents and they're like, oh yeah, this is so-and-so. Oh, she was my client. She's my best friend now. Oh, this was my press client. They're my friends. Oh, this is, these are my other clients. You, you start to just kind of get these people who appreciate you for being you. So if you're one way in business and another way out there, I think in real estate, it's really confusing for the yeah. public to see these two different personas. So Your just, authentic self sells you better than any persona you can put And it's put also there. the easiest thing to do. To do. <laughs> it requires the least so, amount of thought. Speaking about being authentic, this was a good segue into social media. Yeah. So, um, we last time we talked we took a look at instagram and instagram seems to be the hardest one for realtors to try to get out there yeah my feed looks very different i'm only friends with realtors mm -hmm. so every post is the same it doesn't matter who's the realtor or what it's very just i listed. sold the house this just listed this you know project. and it, it's mm -hmm. you kind of get lost in my feed because that's all I see. Yeah. So um, with Instagram, you know, we were talking, there's two things you can do on Instagram. One is the stories, mm -hmm. which is more of like your everyday life, authentic. Yeah, like it stays up for, clips. It stays up for 24 hours. You put anything you want on there. Like right. you have fun with it. Um, the other thing is when on Instagram, it's more or less like sharing stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's how to make your content shareable. Why do I want to take... Um, this post and send it to Jesse Hall. Shout out Jesse Hall, Space Coast Podcast. Boop, boop. Um, all your podcast needs. But like, why do I want to do that? What makes me want to say, oh, this is funny, or oh, I like this, or oh, what's you'll gonna make like you this. stop the scroll? What's gonna, yeah, what's gonna make me send that to my buddy? Right. Um, and that's kind of the the thing with Instagram that I feel like is the most struggled. So absolutely, I agree. Um, so just a little, I I took some notes here before I came here about social media, and I wanted to just kind of talk about. Uh, so overall, it said this was a study done by, I think this was a report done by HubSpot Marketing, and they said it's 4.62 billion people on social media globally. <laughs> That's bananas, yeah. right? So in regards to Instagram, it's the fourth most popular social media site with over a billion users, and over 50% of those users are under 55. So Instagram has traditionally skewed younger. That's changing, obviously, now that uh, technology has become more uh, accessible. Uh, the older generations that previously didn't like grow up with it, like my generation, they're, they've adopted it and so yeah, forth. Everybody got an iPhone now. So yeah, there you go. They got no more flip phones <laughs> out there. Everybody's got an iPhone. So they, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, the demographics are shifting. But one of the interesting things that Instagram did not too long ago is um, Instagram came out and said, we are no longer just a photo sharing platform. Because that's how they started, yeah. uh, was photo sharing. It was like, remember, if you go back and you go way back on all these feeds, you see all of those posts with the weird filters and mm -hmm. we were kind of doing this cool stuff because that was all brand new. Our phones didn't do that. Facebook didn't do that. So it started as a photo sharing site. And then, of course, with the addition of all these uh, these other social media platforms, they, they realized that they had to pivot. And so they announced that they are now a media platform. Yeah, because I remember when they started, you couldn't even post videos. Yeah. It was only, here's a photo. Yeah. There was, not, I think, my first 30 yeah. Instagram posts are just pictures. There's yeah. no, yeah. Boomerangs were the, were, were, that was it. Like, boomerang came yeah. out because you could do that. Yeah. And that was it. You couldn't get movement. Uh, so the thing that happened when they kind of shifted and when they added stories and they added reels, Instagram started kind of having this, uh, I don't even, it's, it was like an evolution where the feed became, it was kind of like everybody knew that the feed, the grid had to be curated and had to look a certain way. And I can't, you do a quick Google search for Instagram feed, uh, aesthetic, it'll blow your mind because it, I mean, down to making sure each square matches up in a specific way. It was a very calculated thing. It's time consuming. It takes a lot of thought. It's way too much work. So people stopped using their feeds. And I actually, I, there's a couple bloggers that I've followed for many, many years. I started following them. They used to post all the time. They do not post to their feed. And they've literally said, we will only do stories. Yeah. Because it's 
takes too much time. And they've also realized there's no engagement there anymore. And Instagram also has hidden the likes in, in certain uh, cases. So you don't know who else has liked it. You don't have an accurate like count, which is actually really interesting if you think about it. Once they did that, how that shifted people actually in interacting with feeds because yeah. it's like, well, no one else was looking at this or I can't tell who else was looking at this. So I don't need to look at it. But the stories really took off. Yeah, which I think they kind of stole from Snapchat, which I'm okay with. 100%. Put it all on one app for me. I'm about 100%, it. 100%, that's what that was. Yeah, and I appreciate the the story again. Is you can have more fun with it. I think exactly. some people kind of get away from that in their stories. Like, So one thing we're going to talk about is content. And content's king in all of this stuff. All of your, all the traditional mail we talked about and all of your digital marketing, it's all content. Mm -hmm. Content is king. I don't care what camera you use. I don't care your your um what what the what am I looking for here? Your graphics. It's, it's yeah. yeah I don't. It's, I don't. It doesn't have to be polished and everything. It's what are you saying and how does it resonate with? Yeah. Me? And it, at the end of the day, if you have bad content and you have great production, nobody cares. Exactly. Nobody cares how good it, your bad a, video is. Exactly. So get the content first, then you can work on buying the expensive camera, all the production, stuff like that. But you got to get the content. And most people forget that their every day is filled with so much content that people actually want to see. Every, what do we say? Everything is content. What's every, that Lego song? Everything is awesome. Everything is content. Yeah. Literally, everything. <laughs> everything. You everything. going to get me this delicious Starbucks drink this morning could have been content. Yep. Headed over to a podcast taping, picking up Starbucks for my, my guest. Yeah. Everything you now do. Now I know you do a podcast because yep. I saw that post. Every, I didn't know already. You know, just little stuff like picking your kids up from school, mm -hmm. um, going to lunch, showing a house, anything you do. But make sure you put yourself in it, too. Like, if I'm looking at a story, I don't want to see a picture of a house. Put you in it. Walk around the house. Say some stuff. You know, I want it's quick 15 seconds. Like, make it fun. Enjoy it. We talked about that uh, when we, we were discussing that, that there is research behind people reacting to a face uh, on a screen versus a static image or a you know a non sentient being <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that there is there is actually a different response in the brain when somebody scrolls past something with a smiling face there is a there's a huge impact on humans recognizing another human um, and it's it's a biological thing. It's not something that we control. Yeah. So put your face out there. And we also talked about don't be worried about how you look. You know what? Wear sunglasses. Okay. Yeah. You're worried about I've got bags under my eyes or put sunglasses on. Okay. No one cares. No one cares. No, and if you put, you know, that's kind of where I like, like if it's dark outside and you have sunglasses on, I'm going to watch that video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the stuff that draws me, though. Make it fun. Make it. Put a funny hat on. Yeah. Do some silly stuff. You're going to get me to watch it. If that's who you are. Yeah. But, but don't yeah. force it. No, Because yeah. if you're not the funny person, yeah. don't be silly. But just. But be yeah, you. Be you know, you. if you, you know, you're going to get me to watch a video. If you're in it, then if it's just a video of a house, you're not going to see me. You know, if it's you walking through the house, making jokes, talking about it, being fun. Yeah, I'm going to watch that video a hundred times. But I would, if you just say, here's another picture of a house, I'm going to keep scrolling because that's all I see. So uh, one of the things that I would say is think like your viewers because a lot of times we get so wrapped up in how and um, what we think everybody else is thinking about us that we don't understand like well what do I think when I'm looking through and scrolling through my feed how do I feel about these posts like you and I had that conversation yeah. you're like I'm tired of seeing this I totally get that so I'm, I guarantee you most agents are also tired of seeing yeah. those posts yeah. too <laughs> we all know we, we all subscribe to the MLS we know what you sold yeah, yeah but uh, I, I get it there's a purpose for that we want to tell that to the potential buyers and sellers. So maybe that's a dark post that's done as a Facebook ad that only goes to a specific audience. Don't spam your feed, especially the market we've been having. Yeah. You've been selling a lot. We know. <laughs> yeah. We all watch the news. Yeah. So you start to kind of, your audience may kind of grow tired of that. So like you said, I'm going to, I'm going to see a picture in my feed and I'm going to scroll right by unless I am somehow uh, prompted to share it or comment. It, it has to evoke an, it, something in me that's going to stop me in my tracks, right? So like you said, just another house tour. No, show me that one really badass feature that house has. Show me that, you know, f eight car garage with the lift. That's the cool part that I'm going to share and go, 
baby, when we make lots of money, I want to get give this to you. Or, you know, uh, when I when I build my dream house, this is going, what it's going to have. Or I want to see that incredible sunset view and, you know, something that's beautiful and awe inspiring. Mm-hmm. Just another house. Just yeah, another house. Just another bathroom. Just another Unless bathroom. Yeah. So, and the other thing, um, let's just get right into Facebook. You mentioned Facebook ads. Facebook, in my opinion, is the easiest one to kind of get on and get going. Most Absolutely. of us have Facebook. And it's also a great way to communicate with your past and future clients. I mean, everybody is on Facebook. There's Everybody and their mom is on Facebook at this point. And that's not even a joke. My grandma's got Facebook. I mean, Absolutely. everybody has Facebook. And it's the easiest way to reach out to one, people that have never, you know, just friends, family, people that have never worked with you. And the other one is past clients. They, they want to see you. It's yeah. a, Referrals are a great source in this industry. And I think Facebook, just being on it, is a good way to get them. Um, so let's talk about Facebook ads. So mm-hmm. we talked about the funnel. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was that was something we talked in detail about. So if you're not familiar with marketing, uh, there's something known as the funnel. And just picture, literally just picture a funnel, like a, you know, a, a V at the top is the widest spot. That's going to be people that are just coming into the funnel, don't know about you, uh, maybe never even heard your name. And they're just, it's the awareness phase. Oh, you exist. And then as they move down the funnel, that's your content is going to change depending where they are in that funnel. So the first time somebody sees me, it's going to be a branding post. It's just going to be, this is, you know, this is me, this is my face, this is whatever. Like you said, branding posts, right? As they get a little bit f- more familiar with me and they've seen some of those, I want to hit them with some some deeper content where I'm actually demonstrating my expertise. I'm talking about my market in a really intelligent way or I am... Uh, breaking down the 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 recent uh data points about uh interest rates and inflation and how it's going to affect our housing market or i'm going to be telling you what it means to be in a multiple offer situation i'm showing you that now that you know that i'm in this industry and this is my job i'm now showing you i'm really good at it like watch me i'm really good at it you know and it's interesting because now i'm i'm actually well, I'm, I'm considering possibly buying or selling, and this person seems to know what they're talking about. And then a little bit further down the line, I want that person to see my my really uh, focused call to action, hey, now is the time to get your house sold. Let me show you how my marketing can get you top dollar and my negotiating skills will what ha- you know blah blah yeah. blah but that's a different message for a different audience i'm not going to tell somebody who's never seen me before oh my god you need to hire me because yeah. i because i'm going to be the best marketer yeah or i know you're looking for this house when you don't know that they're looking for that exactly house. so in facebook ads you create audiences and i know this may be much more uh complicated for the average facebook user but just to go over it. Yeah. Everything's Googleable though. They, so exactly. I, oh my I, gosh. I knew nothing. I didn't know how to build a website. I didn't know how to do any type of Facebook. You spend 30 minutes on YouTube and Absolutely. you know how to do it. It's not, you know, it just takes a little bit of practice, but the first time, you know, it'll take you an hour. The second time it'll take you 30 minutes. The next time you do it, it takes you 10 minutes. Exactly. Like, like anything, yeah. <laughs> the more you practice, the better you get out. Exactly. So you're going to create audiences and you're going to, you can actually within Facebook, there's a lot of cool features. I could take my entire database that's in my CRM, download that and upload that into Facebook and then target those people based on those names, email addresses and phone numbers. Most of the time Facebook can match those users, especially if the phone number is uh, the number that they use on their Facebook profile or their email, or their their email login, address. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I could because these people worked with me and I know them, I'm going to show them I'm going to use that audience and I'm going to advertise a different message to them. And so I think it's really important to kind of know who you're talking to, right? And Facebook will tell you everything. It's crazy, the yeah. analytics that Facebook can give you. It'll tell you when the most people are on. Like you can That's a really important thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's it can become difficult to find that information uh, on Facebook and Instagram. They also like to change where things yeah. are yeah. often, which frustrates me. But uh, one of the best things you could do is, yeah, find out and go ahead, Google it, because it may look different on your, you know, your mileage may vary. It may be different on your PC and your or your uh, phone as to where it's located. But look at your insights. When are your followers online? Hop online about an hour before they get online and post your content then. Yes. So that it's right there fresh as soon as they hop on. And then when you post something, don't just get off and not do anything. Yeah, stick around. Stick around. You know, if they're going to look at your post and they're going to 
the whole point of the post is for engagement. Exactly. You're not just posting something to post something. You're posting it to get a reaction. Now they comment. You need to comment back if they say, "Hey, I really like this house." You know, talk about the house. Say something. If they say, "Oh, that was a funny video," say, "Hey, thanks for you know, I really tried on that one." Yes. You know, the whole point of these posts is for engagement. So for you to just post something. And at the busiest time and then just walk away and not doing it don't you should have never posted exactly and the platform will actually penalize you for that because it's about engagement the algorithm wants to show things to people that it has proven data points showing it's already engaging so if you post something and you get four comments and you never touch it again it's never going to share that to somebody yeah. else but if you've got a post think about here, here's interesting okay so ever like have something come up on your feed and all of a sudden people are like commenting on something that you posted, I don't know, like six months ago and you're like, hey guys, this is an old picture, but thanks, yeah. I appreciate it. It's because there's still engagement happening. Somebody saw it, somebody started commenting and then the algorithm said, ooh, this got, this got reactivated. Let me show it to somebody else. And then somebody else commented. And then I, I don't know how many times I've seen that where people have had yeah, to been like, this old, is a really old yeah. post, guys. I don't know what's going on. And you know, don't put the work in to not reap the benefits. Exactly. Don't sit there and you know take 20 minutes to make a, a post on Canva, post it, and then leave it there and not reap all that benefit. You know, you should have never posted in the first place. So that's a big thing is just staying on top of this stuff. And the consistency we talked about. I know realtors kind of work a 24-hour schedule, yeah. um, but if you can set some type of time to manage marketing, I think is gonna be, you're gonna reap these benefits. You you're need gonna, to put it into your, like marketing, social media engagement should be blocked into your calendar, you know, half an hour here, 25 minutes there, whatever it may be, go online and engage with the people that have engaged with you, respond to your comments, and more importantly, go out there and engage on other people's content. Yeah, don't just scroll. Be don't someone just that, scroll, yeah. yeah. Don't be a, don't be a, a you know, a, a bystander. Go ahead and engage, especially if you've got your clients and you've connected with them and they're posting pictures of the, you know, we just had Memorial Day weekend. Oh my gosh, the amount of content that's out there for you to comment on for your, on your client's content right now and just be like, wow, it looks like you had a great time. The beach was great this weekend, wasn't it? Or, oh man, I wish I could have uh, hit the beach or gosh, that burger looks great. Where did you eat again? Whatever. Just comment on their stuff because now the algorithm is like, oh, hey, these people are talking together. We should show that client some of that agent's content because it looks like they're having a conversation over here. So let's throw some more stuff at them. And one thing I want to talk about too is don't be, um, like if you're not getting reviews, right? If you're not, not reviews, if you're not getting likes, comments, and shares, none of that actually really matters. So there was a thing the other day, especially for videos, um, I think 60% of people on Facebook don't like, share, comment. So, But they're watching. But they are there. So don't, get discouraged because you know you only got 10 people to comment on something um i have you know facebook's great at telling you how long someone has watched a video yeah um they have like a three second uh one a 30 second a one minute um so i like say a taco tuesday i'll get maybe 30 people to comment but a thousand people watch my video for a minute that's where the real marketing happens that's what i care about i don't care about those like shares now they are nice and when they do comment that's you get uh, you engage with right. them but that's not the goal and you know, essentially, it's just the the people actually seeing your content. You know, most people won't. Are people are seeing it, and you don't know. I mean, I don't know how many times you'll. I'm guilty of this. I'll bump into somebody, and I'll say something like, "Oh, I saw that you were over there," and I'm like, "I never actually commented on that post, so I sound like a total creeper." <laughs> yeah. Oops. But I'm watching. Yeah. I yeah. see. I see what everybody's doing. I may not be commenting because you know, I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. I need to take my own advice. Uh, but you every people are watching yes and and especially like we said instagram is even they're suppressing some of that data anyway so it doesn't matter you're not gonna you're not gonna have an accurate idea unless you're looking at your analytics on yeah. the back end because it's not showing to the to the public and some of the stuff i've seen out there um which sometimes i even you know am guilty of doing is don't post the same thing across all Correct. Social medias. Um, Correct. Now, sometimes I'll change it up. Sometimes I do post the same just because I'm trying to get a direct message out to as many people as I can. But I try to have a little bit more fun. Um, yeah, you can tailor, say, it, tailor it by the platform. People say Facebook, you have to be more professional. I don't think so. What? Um I like <laughs> no. I like a fun Facebook. I don't think Facebook is anything that you have to be like suit and tie. I think you can have a lot of fun with Facebook, and you should. Um, Instagram, I think you can have the most fun with. And I think that's where... I don't know, you TikTok. Yeah, I don't have TikTok. That's my one. I need to get on TikTok. <laughs> um, but that's the one... 
where I think the stories are really you can you can do whatever you want to. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any kind of line. I would say I would say if you if you want to attribute being professional, quote unquote, uh, to any platform, I would say LinkedIn. Yeah, because LinkedIn is considered to be uh, a little bit more of a workplace specific. Prof- it does have more of a professional. But let's be honest, the idea of what professional is has changed a lot in the last 20 years and we are kind of redefining what it means to be professional i don't know i don't know about you guys but i've been captivated by the amber heard johnny depp trial (laughs) yes and i have been watching the coverage from a youtube creator who is a lawyer very professional 17 years as a like a da assistant whatever she's got purple hair yeah. I don't find her not credible because she has purple hair. She is just as professional in my mind as uh, John Morgan from Morgan and Morgan. Right. Yeah. And here's the other thing too is if you know and if you see on LinkedIn that everything is professional, you know, and you can make a funnier or you know, you're going to stand out. Absolutely. You know, so I don't think you have to really cater to each. I think they each have their own um you know, they each have their own kind of style where mm-hmm. you can kind of, but I think if you go and you, you, that you have a video you like posted on LinkedIn, cause you know, if you can be a little bit more yourself and you see everybody in suit and tie, suit and tie, suit and tie, and then there's you running around open house, having fun, food trucks, stuff like that, you know, get it out there. I'm going to watch that video over yes. everything else. It's just making yourself a little different than everybody else. And actually, I just want to kind of stop you there. Video yeah. for years, years. I mean, I want to say, God, what is it? What's 2020? Like five years ago the real estate coaching world was like hey guys you might want to start doing video get on video just just recently um a few months back it was you better do this now because if you don't start video now you're going to be behind and i think i could not stress this enough that is where we are going everything is video everything And, and and you don't even here's the thing video doesn't necessarily mean you on camera moving doing something video can just be moving pictures moving text across the screen animation it doesn't always have to be selfie mode i'm on camera but it's something that plays automatically especially with captions that's another thing too always make sure you have captions because the majority of people watch content without the volume on because they're sitting at their desk at work or they're in line at the grocery store or they are somewhere where they can't necessarily use sound unless of course they've got airpods which i'm still so confused i talk to people (laughs) who i think are talking to me and they're not because they have something in their ear but absolutely make sure you use captions so go for video put captions on there and just post it and don't worry. In captions, I mean, there's so many apps uh, now on your phone. Where you uh, well, can and they do them any, natively. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you can find anything that'll, I mean, all this is super easy. You just got to go online, Google best caption Says app. Says you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know Google, that's the comment we're going to hear. Yeah. I, you say, you, know, uh, you say it's easy, but. Again, everything is, writing contracts was hard when you first started and now it's super easy. It's kind of all everything exactly. that gets that way. Um, and, and let's be fair. When you got into the business and you decided to be a real estate agent, I guarantee it wasn't because you wanted to become a professional digital marketer. No. Guaranteed. So I get that you did not necessarily sign up for this, but it is it is what it is. This is the nature of business. And this is not just real estate. This is all businesses now. And then back to what we're talking about on the consistency, don't just post one thing and say, mm-hmm. oh, I'm good for the month on Facebook. <laughs> you need to be consistent. You need to post, post, post. You need to do all of this stuff. That's one thing I've learned is I've got deals from direct marketing. I've got deals from cold calling. I've gotten deals from brand marketing. I got deals from call marketing. I've got deals from search engines. I got deals from social media. You get business from all of these. Mm -hmm. Jesse gave me a book that I read in the very beginning that talked about this when I first started. You have to do, what was the name of that book, Jesse? Do you remember? I gave you a couple. He gave me, I forget the name. It was some guy, it's it's blue. Um, Well, I'll put it in the comments, but it it was just, you get it. Oh, the purple cow, yeah, Simon. uh, You get it, you know, it wasn't that one. I don't know, it was a blue with a, I don't know, he's in a blue suit, it's a blue book cover. I don't remember, but it talks about just doing everything. Everything works, you can't just pick one. You can't just say, hey, I'm gonna direct mail and that's all, because it's not gonna work. You're gonna get deals from every aspect of marketing. But let's not overwhelm them. They don't have to do everything. Yes, That's the other thing. Pick one or two that resonate the most with your audience. So do a quick Google search. This, literally, to before I came on here, I wanted to look at some stats, so I just Googled social media demographics 2022. Great articles you're gonna find. The first one's gonna be 
probably the best one, um, HubSpot, and it's going to give you all these data points and it's going to tell you, like for instance, um, Instagram, over 50% of their users are under 55, right? Okay. Well, if I know that the majority of my clients are, you know, 45 and up, okay, I probably have some on Instagram, but maybe not. Yeah. You know, and or um, especially like high net worth individuals, um, doctors, lawyers, uh, people with very busy professions who are likely not on social media might have a LinkedIn because that's where other uh, like-minded professionals connect with them for speaking engagements or conventions or, you know, educational training, whatever it may be. So get to know your audience. That's another thing too. Like when you work with somebody, ask them, hey, how did you, you know, if they don't know you and you don't know the background, how did you find me? Where did you, you know, how did you get to know who I was or my name or how'd you come across me? And the best response that you're going to get, and this is a response we used to get a lot in my old team was, I don't know, I see your stuff everywhere. Yeah, you do. And that's (laughs) one of the things too that I love about analytics is you can start real wide. You know, you can go across the board and do kind of direct mail, do a couple things, find out what works for you and then target that. Yeah. Um, If you're getting a great, you know, say you have a LinkedIn, a Facebook, a Instagram, a TikTok, and you're getting 95% of your business through Facebook, well, throw some more on Facebook. You know, yep. you can you can slow down on those other three and really focus on your clients if that's where they are, you know. Um, don't get rid of everything, but, you know, if you're going to make 10 posts a week, you know, make seven of them on Facebook if that's it. You know, if you get right. to getting all your business. Um, but again, it's all about consistency. You know, one Taco Tuesday didn't get me any business. Right. My first Taco Tuesday, 50 people watched the video. Yeah. Now I have 15 to 2,000. You know, 1,500, 2,000 people that watch our videos after 30 Taco Tuesdays. Not even, what's the, what's the coolest thing that just happened to you with, because of your Taco Tuesdays? Which has oh, nothing to do yeah. with title, guys. Oh, yeah. So there's a place uh, opening up. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, El Diablo. And they reached out to us. They did a private Taco Tuesday for us. Um, the place isn't even open yet. It's with the old uh, crying monk. And they brought in a private chef. They brought in all of their um, silent partners that all their tequilas up. It's called Naked Diablo is their tequila brand. You know, they threw us this whole thing just so that I would give them a review on our Taco Tuesday. So places that aren't even open yet are asking us to come out and do um, Taco Tuesday. All because you and your friends go out and eat tacos and drink margaritas and, and record, record it. it. That's it. <laughs> you know, and I don't have a fancy production. No. You know, I record everything on an iPhone. I do have a little thing that holds my iPhone, yeah. but it's not, you know, that was $10 on Amazon. It's not It's not expensive. Um, when I first started, I record. I uh, did everything through Apple Movie, so it's free. Yeah. Um, now I've gone on to Final, Final Cut, Cut Pro, Pro, but you'll, you know, Apple Movie did my first 40 videos I did everything on Apple Movie, which yeah. is free if you have a Mac. So, yeah. and there's um, so a couple a couple things. Uh, the quality of the video, like we said, it's not really important. Everybody's watching this these stories and and things like that, where it's not professional production quality video. But sound is, I think, the most important thing. So if yeah. you are speaking, either make sure you're using headphones or um, if you've got the wireless earbuds that connect so you have a clear if you're speaking that's going to be the biggest thing i don't want to hear the wind you know i'm pretty loud but we usually got to have sam wait speak up yeah i I just (laughs) i'm like i just bought um yesterday i think it's arriving today a 12 dollar lav mic off amazon just so that i can make sure that i um have clear audio uh when i'm doing these little kind of you'll see i'm going to be posting a video later today a girlfriend and i we did a little impromptu interview uh to help promote an event she's doing and the audio wasn't great because I didn't have anything on me. So, yeah, it that if you're going to spend any money, don't worry about a fancy camera. Don't worry about a fancy editing thing. Use whatever comes with your uh, computer or your phone. You know, if you've got Apple, you've got iMovie. There's plenty of free or very inexpensive apps. But do invest in something that's going to get clear audio. So that could just simply be a wired, wired uh, ear earpiece and I feel like my lesser quality is why people watch it because you know it's authentic it's not like like if I had a whole production team out there recording as the tacos I don't in my opinion the videos wouldn't be as good they wouldn't be as real I think the, the realness almost makes you seem like you're there than if someone was just you know you could tell that it was professionally done and I think the the shenanigans of it is makes it even better I think people like the fact that they know it's just me holding the phone so we as a society uh, we used to be obsessed with celebrity gossip magazines because it used to be the only way that we could see these people living real lives. Well, now that we all have phones in our back pockets, we could show anybody living their real life. And I think that's 
it, it was interesting to us back then. We did, uh, yes, okay. There, I, I saw Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie, but I want to see him out with with his friends on a Friday night. What is he doing? What is she, you know? Where are they eating? What are they doing? People were so captivated by those gossip magazines when they first came out well guess what social media is yeah. it's, it's the most voyeuristic yeah. gossip magazine for from everyday people yep. <laughs> so uh fa- like i said we just did a big on uh, social media we like that a lot um if you have any other questions we'll probably have uh amy back to do another social media one because i think to. that's a big one um so the next thing we're going to go into is email marketing some drip campaigns yeah. um this i think is a very easy way to capture leads um you don't have to do, you kind of have to do the initial work and yeah. then it kind of works for you. Correct. So I, um, I'm i not the greatest at this, but I do get some emails out um, and I do get great responses. It's kind of silly. Again, what I didn't think is gonna work, works. Yeah, and, and don't overthink it. Provide value. Just provide value. So say, you, you kind of, you have to take your real estate agent, realtor, uh, industry professional hat off and go, if I wasn't a real estate agent, would I give to you know, yeah. th- about this. Is this topic at all interesting to to me if I'm not currently in this situation? If not, then that then you know that that content is specific for an audience at a, at a different spot in the funnel, right? Yeah. So you you just want to make sure that the content is uh, engaging, valuable, and it doesn't have to be long. Like email marketing, you don't have to think like this huge newsletter that goes on and on and on because nobody's reading that. And email is the one I think I don't read the most. Like as a person on the other side, like if you send me an email, it's hard to get me to click and read it, you know? Now what if I sent you a video email? Yeah, that's a big Mm -hmm. one too. And so I was- Lots of companies out there that can help you guys do that. I saw one of, um, which the ones I actually read the most is whatever your clientele, whatever you do, um, try to post that. Not everything has to be about real estate. Absolutely. So you can send an email that says, you know, here's a recipe. Like I made this chicken dip. I know the Super Bowl's coming up, you know, pat this buffalo chicken dip out your Super Bowl. You know, if you're a big golfer, um, which I am, you know, post, hey, here's a tip for your golf swing. Hey, here's a couple tea times you can get this weekend. You know, if you're big into events, say, hey, there's a couple events this weekend down in Cocoa Village. Oh, people love that. that yeah. uh, a lot of real estate agents will do that. They'll talk about within their specific community what uh, what events are. And I, I don't know how many times I've heard agents, you know, that have that provide that kind of content regularly. They'll have people come up to them and say, I stopped getting your newsletter, but I, I can you, can you, how do I get back on that list or something? Yeah. Because, you know, maybe they just dropped off or it bounced or something. And that kind of content people keep coming back for. And that's the stuff I'll click on. You know, if you yeah. click on, if I, if I get an email that says, hey, events this weekend, you know, I'm going to click on it. If I get a, hey, I sold this house for 400000 I'm probably not going to look at it. Yeah. So it's, it's coming up with content again that not everything has to be about real estate. It's just more of keeping these people interested in you. You're the... You're what they have to remember. You know, are they going to like a house? Yeah. Are they looking for houses? Correct. Are they looking to sell a house? Yes. But if they can like you because they like your chicken dip, then you're already ahead of the game. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of times, too, as realtors, we forget that uh, this is not common practice for other people. I mean, I am not going to uh, a, a party at a friend's house and the CPA that lives next door, at, we're chatting and he's telling me everything about all the all the deals he did and all the taxes he wrote he I don't even know how to say that eloquently (laughs) but why do we talk so much about what we do well because we know that that's how we get leads but yeah it doesn't have to be all the time and if that is all that you do then that is what people are you're you're actually going to get pushback if you're just always on I guess we would say right like trying to sell something you know you know those you know those people in your feed that you don't want to bump into public into in publics because you know they're going to ask you to try and buy their newest this or oh you know somehow they always manage to turn the conversation around to trying to get me to join their team or do the that <laughs> yeah. guys just be a be a person just yeah. be a human you just want to make it marketing is just you want to make it so they think about you when they need whatever you're selling absolutely so, i want you to think when you want to do uh, like for me i want you to think amy gatehouse marketing when it's time for you to pump up your marketing and your lead generation and your you know lead capture yeah let's talk about gatehouse marketing now so now we've we've gone through all our marketing tips you have so many leads now you have leads coming in from direct mail you have leads coming in from brand marketing your social media is just blowing up now what do we do well you better have a system and where do we get that system (laughs) well so i will say most agents uh, if you're with a brokerage of a certain size will provide you with some form of a crm 
customer relationship management software, right? So um, the big ones in the industry, I would say, are things like uh, Follow Up Boss, Top Producer, or, uh, I don't even know anybody else anymore. KB Core. KB Core, there you go. That comes with a brokerage as well. So uh, dive into that. If you have one, dive into it. I mean, watch every video, read through the help tutorials, find out how the power users use it because that becomes your second brain. I know too many agents, listen, the good, the agents that join this industry and really succeed, um, they are very good at managing a lot of data, a lot of information, and most often they're keeping it all in their heads. Get that out of your head. Get that into your CRM. Have your CRM tell you who to call and when and how often because you've set it up to tell you that. And then you're not constantly driving around going, oh, dang it, I needed to call that person. Oh, I forgot to respond to that lead. No, have have that information, have that CRM optimized to do the work for you because that's I mean, the agents that I know that are super successful, they lean so hard on their CRM and it really makes everything so easy. They're not remembering and and taking up all of this mental space with these data points that like, let the software do that for you. But like you said, what am I gonna do with all these leads? Well, if you don't have a system to follow up on them and somebody reaches out for you, but you've never gotten the email and you're not following up, guess what, they're calling the next person. Mm -hmm. So, So marketing can only go as far as you to answer these phone calls, to, to yeah. reach out to them. You can do, you can spend hours on marketing. How many times if, have you called a vendor because you've seen their ads and you're like, they don't answer the phone. Yeah. I need somebody to you know, build my fence or fix my roof and I've called all of these companies that I see their marketing everywhere and no one's answering the phone. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest kind of, you know, you're wasting all that time that you spent. What's exactly. the point of going out there and doing all this marketing if you're not gonna follow up with all these leads? Exactly. Because um, that's the whole point of marketing is lead generation. You know. <laughs> That's exactly it. And I don't know. I've been in a couple of conferences, and that's the first thing they, they'll, they'll say out. What is marketing? And everybody says something. Or what's the purpose of marketing? Oh, it's advertising. No, to get leads. Mm-hmm. The purpose of marketing is to get leads. What you do with those leads is equally important because that's how you convert. Right, so what do you do at uh, Gatehouse Marketing? So I do a couple things. Uh, right now, I'm currently working with some agents, helping them get their operations and their lead generation and all that kind of stuff set up so agents that you know have a CRM but have never really used it all right well let's let's work together let me get those leads in there let's scrub those leads let's segment that database let's figure out who we need to talk to and when and set it up for you so that what I was saying is you're not keeping this in your head anymore Uh, with that comes some of the operations stuff too since my previous experience has also been kind of uh, tweaking and streamlining the operations side of the real estate business. So things like your paperwork and your process from the moment you get an offer or you get a contract or you get a listing appointment, what happens and who handles it for you? Because, uh, you know, at some point, if you're successful in this business, you're going to become too busy, too busy to do it all. So you have to offload some of those things to another person this typically is an administrator of some sort and that's kind of how i started in the industry um working as an assistant doing the paperwork doing the the you know transaction desk and all that kind of stuff so but you can't hire somebody if you don't know how to like and bring them on and say okay we'll do this I don't, do what how do i do this so what i'm doing is i'm working with some of my, two of my clients right now i'm working with them to uh kind of uh, streamline their operations, get the system set up, give them a manual. Okay, this is how you run your business. Now let's start marketing. And then we're going to start with social campaigns and things like that. I'm also, so that, that's like one side of it. You need help getting your stuff. You need to figure out how to get your Google My Business. You don't you have a Facebook business page. You need to optimize your Zillow profile, all that stuff. That's me. Call me. I'll help you out. But I'm also, I'm working with uh, another uh, professional in our area. I don't know if I can, I don't, I don't want to say anything yet because I don't, we're not kind of there, but we're going to be putting together a, um, like a content service. So one of the things is I get that I should be doing this. I get that I should have video content, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And it always seems to take all this time and then I get frustrated and then I just drop it and I never touch it. Awesome. Guess what? 
we're going to put something together where, hey, you book three to four hours with us a month. We sit down, we do some taping, and then we turn that three to four hours of taping into your content for the whole month and then evergreen content for your drip campaigns. So, and, and that's everything from let's brainstorm. Who, who are we talking to? What is the messaging? Let's work on the script. We're going to direct you. We're going to produce you. We're going to provide you with the assets. And we may even teach you how to use those assets in your social media. And potentially, we may even be able to be hired to do it for you and do your ads and all of that. We're, that's kind of the future. And that's what I think some of the marketing, too. Like, you don't have to make videos every day. No. You know, you can take an hour, two hours of your time, make a bunch of batch, stuff. Batch they content. They don't know what the day is. I mean, I say this all the time. Yeah, most of the days we get tacos are Tuesdays. But, like, if you can't make it on a Tuesday, we'll go to Wednesday. Nobody knows it's not Tuesday. Nobody's going to know. Nobody knows that it's, Who's you know. Who's going to know? How are they going to know? <laughs> Nobody's going to know. So that's kind of the thing. Like, if you have time, make it. If you don't, don't. But, you know, if you have three, four hours, we can sit there and make up content, do it. And then you're good for the week or two weeks or the month. You know, you don't have to sit there. A little there. planning goes a long way. Yeah. And that's one of the things um, that we do with this podcast. It's not, you know, we're sitting here for an hour, but I'm going to cut it up into a bunch of stuff, throw it in some emails, throw it on, a, you know, Facebook. And, you know, this one hour of my time is going to be a month of content for me exactly and there's no reason an agent can't do that so you're an agent I'm your client put a camera up interview me about my experience with you get it on camera turn that into a couple clips some sound bites with a with a graphic with the words on it you've got yeah. content for days yeah it's easy to do so thank you for coming on our show this we covered so a fun. lot here um, again shout out to uh, Space Coast podcast Jesse Hall yes, for always you, uh, making great content for us here if you guys have any questions please reach out again Amy with Gatehouse Marketing we'll see how good she does you can probably google her see what comes up <laughs> oh gosh no don't look don't look I really because I just I really just launched this without actually launching everything else so uh, she's but, got a great Facebook page get on there yeah, yeah you'll find me you'll find her if you need any help as always thank you for watching uh, Talking Title and we'll see you next time awesome thanks for having me guys